the panic. Oh, it was awful. And I had just messed it up. I felt as if I was letting everybody down. So silly, so, I was so silly. I've never told you these stories before, mostly because at the time I was really embarrassed that I would make such silly mistakes. But if I can stop you from making the same mistakes that I've made, I think it will be worth it. Two years ago, I took my first ever cruise with P&O Cruises. We were cruising from the UK and we were cruising around Norway. I was taking the cruise with my mum and it was right at the start of my YouTube career. I really wanted to be a proper YouTuber at the time and I had all of these visions and plans in my mind for everything I was gonna get done on that cruise. To make this even more dramatic and exciting for me, the newbie cruise YouTuber Emma Cruises, there was an event happening on the cruise ship which was the launch of a magic show called Astonish. Given the title of this video, you won't be surprised that it didn't exactly go to plan. I did get on board successfully, I did get to see the magic show, which was why I was there. They gave us tons of champagne, there were celebrities there, there were even people from Coronation Street there, which I thought was very cool, I'm a big Coronation Street fan. As soon as I got back to my cabin, I realised that things were not as they seemed, everything was not going well, I had made a very, very big mistake, and as soon as I realised that feeling of just dread, whew, oh, it was horrible. I realised as I got back to my cabin, as I opened my bag, that my MacBook Air, which I had bought on the cruise so that I could edit every day, so that I could be this proper YouTuber, was not in my bag. Absolute panic set in at this point. I knew that I had bought it to security at least. I knew that I had bought it on the cruise and I hadn't left it at home absolute panic at that moment. Not only because a MacBook Air is pretty expensive and I didn't want to lose it, but also because I had this plan. I had the whole week mapped out in my brain of what I was gonna get done. I was gonna edit a bit of the footage every single day for the daily vlogs. And at that point, I thought as though P&O had put their faith in me by inviting me to this event and I had just messed it up. I felt as if I was letting everybody down. I quickly realised that what had happened was I had left my MacBook in security at Southampton Cruise Terminal. What had happened is I gave in my bag, they took my laptop into a different tray. I remember them doing that, my fault, not their fault. They put it into a different tray, it went through the scanner, I picked up my bag, just thinking, I've got my bag, that's my one item, and I left. I left my MacBook Air in the scanner in the tray. And I didn't tell anybody about this for a long time when I was on the cruise. If you watched any of my videos, I didn't really mention it. I didn't mention it on social media. I didn't want anybody to know. You might be thinking, Emma, that's no big deal. You're still in port, you can just get off or they can just bring you the laptop. No, by the time I realised everything had closed down, we were ready to sail away. And as I spoke to security, they said that the best thing they could do, they had it, no one had stolen it, thank goodness. But what they would do was they would take the MacBook and they would keep it until I came back in seven days time. Seven days my MacBook sat, I assume, just in a cupboard somewhere at Southampton cruise port. So silly, so, I was so silly. At the time, I was completely gutted that I had left my MacBook Air in security. I couldn't believe that I would have been so silly. Gutted, by the way, is your Britishism of the week. Gutted just means disappointed, pretty much, as if your guts have been pulled out because you're so disappointed. That's how I felt, completely gutted. Because I had left my MacBook Air in security, that meant that I couldn't do the work that I had planned. I was able to keep up to date with Instagram and Facebook. I did have my phone and I did have a camera that I used to record daily vlogs. But if I had had my MacBook Air there, I probably would have spent at least a couple of hours every single day editing and writing. I used to do that on my cruises, but since this, I realised that I don't need to do that. Maybe it's okay if I just enjoy the cruise and I worry about putting together content afterwards. I know it sounds silly now, but I really was so set on the idea of being this proper cruise YouTuber, proper cruise blogger, and I felt like I had to be productive all of the time. On that cruise, I had the best time. It was a cruise with just me and my mum. We'd never been on a trip just together before, and we had an amazing time. And maybe some of that was because I wasn't able to work. I had to actually be in the moment and enjoy the cruise, which was so good. I'm not grateful that I left it in security, but I am grateful for the fact that it made me enjoy the cruise while I was there, rather than working. The next cruise mistake is more recent. It happened on board my last cruise. I was cruising on board the Norwegian Spirit with my family just before Christmas. And on this cruise, I made a mistake that was in the works for a full week before even the cruise. I still have no words, still have no words. I am not a person who 
ever likes to have professional photos taken. I don't think I've ever been and had a professional photo shoot on land. The only time I ever have professional photos taken is on a cruise. On almost all cruises, you'll find a photographer. The photos can be quite expensive, but for me, it's about capturing that memory. So sometimes it is worth buying the photos. And that's where this story comes in. I knew that I wanted to get some photos of me on this cruise. I knew that before I even went on the cruise. I'm quite nervous about having photos taken. I don't like standing in the atrium when there's a queue of people looking at me smiling and doing those silly poses that they make you do. It makes me feel very, very awkward. But I knew before the cruise that I wanted to have photos taken. I wanted new photos for my YouTube picture, for my Instagram picture. And that was one of my aims of this cruise. What I did to kind of minimize the awkwardness was I waited until there was pretty much nobody around. Everybody else was at dinner and I was in the pub with my family. I was wearing a red dress. I thought that was appropriate because I'm wearing a red dress in my picture now. So I thought this is the perfect time. This is my chance right now. I'm dressed up. I'm wearing the red dress. I'm ready to go. The photographers are there. They've got their screen set up. I'm just gonna do it. And what I did was I left the pub, I went to the toilet, and as I came back, the photographer said to me like, oh, come on, come over here, have some photos taken, in the way that they do, in the encouraging way, they want you to have photos taken, and I had some photos taken. I had the generic one with the photo frame and the sat down and the stood up, and I thought it was fine, it was okay, I had achieved what I wanted to do, I felt awkward, I always feel awkward having photos taken, but it was okay, and I was, happy with what I had done. I got them back to my cabin. I paid for the actual photos. At the time, I think there was a deal, you buy three pictures for a certain amount of money. I can't remember the specifics, but cruise photos are pretty expensive. So I had the three photos in my hands. I took them back to the cabin and I took some photos of them just to show that I had had photos taken. If I knew what was gonna happen, I would have taken proper scan up from the top photos that were useful, but I didn't know what was gonna happen. So this is the only photo I have of these photos. But this is proof that I did actually have them taken. I did buy them and I got them back to my cabin. When it came to disembarkation day, I couldn't find them anywhere. So I assumed that I had packed them in my suitcase. I thought that I put them just down the pocket in the front to keep them flat. I couldn't find them, but I assumed, you know, they're not here. There's not many places you can keep them in the cabin. Must be in my bag. Must be in my bag. Must be in, not in my bag. It was at that point on disembarkation day where you've been asked to leave your cabin and you're sitting around waiting for your luggage tag to be called. I had a look through my bag. I looked in the pockets. I realized I did not have these photos that I had gone to so much work to get. This was one of my main aims for the cruise and I'd managed to lose them. At that point, I went back to the cabin and I asked the cabin steward, have you found anything in this cabin? Because they had completely cleaned it and turned it over for the next passengers. I was thinking maybe they just slipped down the side of the bed or something and they would have them there. The cabin steward said that he hadn't seen them. I couldn't see them anywhere. He let me have a quick look around the cabin. And with that, I assumed they must be in my suitcase. There is nowhere else they can be. They're not in this cabin. They have to be in my suitcase. It wasn't until I got back all the way to England from Italy that I realized that they're not here. I took out every single item of my suitcase. I looked in the lining of my suitcase just in case they had gone in there and they were not there. If I had paid for a digital download, that would have been fine, but I didn't. I thought I just need these physical ones. I thought I'll save myself some money and I will scan them in when I get home. Never saw them again, never saw them again. Of course, it was sad to lose that money and to lose the photos. The photos weren't anything amazing. Looking back on it, they were okay. I could probably take some photos of similar quality at home, but I did go out of my comfort zone. I did get the photos done and I did successfully complete the mission, even if I didn't manage to get them home. Since then, I have not updated my pictures. I've still got pictures that I took on board an Emerald Waterways river, river cruise. <laughs> But that was only two years ago. I don't feel like I'm catfishing anyone with that picture. Hopefully I still look the same as that, but I had built it up in my mind to be such a big thing for this entire cruise. This was the thing that I wanted. And by not getting it, I realized that I didn't even really need it, but I am happy that I did do that. I did step outside of my comfort zone. It was a bit awkward, but it was actually okay. And I'm, I will have photos taken again because it's fine. 
as fine. This next story caused me to panic unlike any other type of panic. You know, when panic goes through your body, you can feel the adrenaline. That's what happened in this story. So I was taking a Royal Caribbean cruise. I was cruising on board the Independence of the Seas and it was the night before disembarkation day. We were coming back to the UK. I can't remember specifically where we were last, but wherever we were, the time zone was one hour different to what it was in the UK. I had everything organized. I really like to have a schedule. I like to have a plan. I like to know what I'm doing when. Normally on a cruise, what you'll do is you'll pack your bag and you'll leave it outside your cabin the night before you disembark. It will be taken off in the middle of the night and you will be reunited in the cruise port. If you have a small bag or you're happy with carrying it off yourself, it can be easier just to take the bag with you. This cruise was only five nights long. I pack very lightly anyway, so it was so much easier for me just to pick up my bag and take it and I'm grateful that I did decide that. I genuinely still don't know how this happened. I'm really organized with things like this, but my phone changed the time and I had already changed the time or it didn't change the time and I thought it would change the time. Either way, I ended up one hour further into the future than I wanted to be. And when I woke up, I had something like seven minutes to get dressed, packed, out of the cabin, everything gone. I could hear the housekeeping outside my room, walking up and down the room, the absolute panic looking at my phone and realizing, it's seven minutes to eight. I thought it was seven minutes to seven. It's seven minutes to eight. I turned on the cabin TV because that is the time. Whatever the cabin TV says, that is the time. The panic. Oh, it was awful. Because I had already done all of that planning, I pretty much was packed. It was a very, very, very quick get dressed, brush your teeth, go to the toilet, get out the door. A very quick check of everything to make sure that we hadn't left anything in the room. And you know what? It was actually okay. People must oversleep all the time and I actually still managed to get out of the cabin on time despite my mess up of an hour. When I look back on this cruise now, although at the time it was very, very stressful, it's one of my favorite memories because it was just so funny. We packed up so fast, we got off the cruise ship, we had to walk to a train station and then sit on a train to get back home. I remember sitting on the train, I think with my suitcase on my lap and just being like, Oh, the relief that we had managed to get off on time despite everything going wrong. And it made me realize maybe I don't have to panic so much if things go slightly off schedule. I do like to know what I'm doing when, I like to have that plan. But in this situation, it all went wrong, but it still was all okay. I'm sure on cruises, people oversleep all the time and I didn't even, I was still on time. So the cruise line didn't even care. Now that you know what mistakes you should not make on your next cruise, check out this video. This is all of the most exciting new cruise ships coming in the future and everything that we have to look forward to.